Hi everyone, it's Allie. Welcome. Today I'm going to share with you a quick card I made using Trinity Stamps Lady Liberty. My kids and I um, decided to try to make some fireworks of our own. They really enjoy anything crafty, anything artistic. <laughs> so um, we normally have a summer fest in our town and that is when they do our fireworks but because of COVID they had canceled um, so we didn't do fireworks this year I really didn't feel like taking them somewhere in big crowds I'm still um, very leery of that I in fact I'm like more leery of that now than I was in the beginning I think just because we quarantined for so long um, and now that they're letting people out, I just feel like there's just too many people everywhere. <laughs> um, so we are being ultra careful. Um, so we had a very quiet 4th of July. We went out and did like sparklers um, and poppets and little things like that. But um, they played in their little pool in the backyard and that that was about it for us. We had ribs, um, so it was a nice quiet 4th of July. So later that night I decided to get out some paper um, and see what we could do with making some fireworks. So I used a black sheet of paper here and I have my Altenew metallic watercolors and I just pl was playing. Um, I'm not going to use this one for my actual finished card. I just wanted to see. I have never used those watercolors before. Um, and they are beautiful. So I didn't know how they were going to work on paper or what the colors were going to show up like. Um, so I'm just kind of playing to get a feel for them. Um, they came with that Altenew water brush there. And I got them on such a good deal um, I found them just by chance on Craft Stash, and I have never shopped there before. I kind of discovered them in the last few months, and sometimes I have to say their prices are great. And I've never seen those watercolors and anywhere cheaper. Um, so I had bought those, and I had bought their other watercolors um, that had come out about the same time in. I want to say, I don't know what they call them, um, but I have not opened those up yet. So um, as you can see here, I'm just going along and kind of making different fireworks. I pulled up some pictures on my phone um, to see what different fireworks look like to kind of see if what I can recreate. I am not an artist. I don't draw. Um, I do little things <laughs> that I think I can recreate. Um, I wish I can draw better than I do, so I kind of like to play sometimes with it. Um, but anyone can do this. I, I did not do anything fancy, like I said. So um, we had a lot of fun, though. My kids had fun trying it out, and I had a lot of fun. I should have sat and played a little bit more. I should have thought about this earlier in the day. <laughs> Maybe I would have came up with some better ones there, but um, we'll see. So I once I'm done with these, it's going to flip over. I ended up using um, a Navy cardstock, and my cardstocks are from Stampin' Up. I just have so many left over. That's mainly what I use. So I picked out a couple colors. Um, I really like the gold, the purple, the blue, the red. Now, some of the red, and then they have like some pinks in there, they look fairly similar. Um, so I'll have to play with them some more to kind of see what happens. And I think the one firework I'm doing right now, the gold, um, and then I end up putting some like blue stars, I think that one was like my favorite. Um, but you'll have to tell me at the end if you liked my fireworks, um, if you've tried freehanding some of this before. But a fair, a fireworks, they're fairly easy. I think anyone can do those. Um, so let me know what you think. And if you guys hear stuff in the 
background. I apologize. Um, my kids are running around, the dog's running around, but I kind of wanted to get this out and I did it kind of last minute. This wasn't planned. <laughs> so, but the card came out so cute. I, I just wanted to share. So here I pulled out that Navy card stock and I'm going to put my fireworks on there. So I'm going to do five big fireworks um, for my odd amount, which is more pleasing to the eye. And then I'm going to stamp my image and get that colored up. Now for my image, I did stamp it on a colored cardstock. Um, at first, I was going to paper piece her outfit and just put in some um, dark and light tones with colored pencil. But I ended up deciding just to color it on that colored cardstock. Um, so you will see that coming up. Um, here I was making a red and blue firework. I really like how that one came out too. That was really fun to make. And uh, see, there they all are. <laughs> so then I used, they have like a white um, shimmery ink on there. Ink, I want to say paint. Um, so I used that to put some flicks on there. And then I pulled out my image here and I'm gonna color her. So when I color on colored cardstock, um, if you want your coloring to be vivid or if you want to just go over that color in certain areas and make it white, you can go ahead and just use your white colored pencil. And that'll cover up that cardstock um, and like I said, not only does it make your images more vivid, but you see here, I can turn her skin to a skin color. Um, and you would never know that I had this on colored cardstock. Um, it was light enough for me to do that, but it gave me like some starting color for her um, clothes, which is what I was kind of going for there. So I used my Prismacolor today. I have to say, I know a lot of people love Prismacolor pencils. They're not my favorite. Um, I bought a starter set um, when I first started playing with colored pencils, I, which is the set I still have today. Um, I don't know. I keep them because I keep thinking, oh, I'm just going to sell these. But then I keep them and try to play with them. I have a hard time because they seem to break on me fairly easy um, and I, I, I don't know I, I have a hard time sharpening them um, I did end up buying a new sharpener you saw a quick little um, view of that it's the orbit which I can link that one down below I love that pencil sharpener it is awesome um, never had a problem with it works great and I just bought that on Amazon. So if, if you are into colored pencils or if you're in the market for a sharpener, I totally would recommend that one. Um, and I think, I don't know if I found that sharpener through Sandy Allnock or um, it might have been through someone else. But I'm going to say I think it's through Sandy, if any of you watch her. Um, she's awesome. I love to watch her color. I love getting her tips. So here I just grabbed, I wanted her paper and then, um, I don't know what you even call that, like the, where her flame is coming out of, um, to look more like white or silvery. And then I was just trying out some colors down below. I did not save my colors um, like I said, I just grab, grab some random colors um, to see what I could do with her. And she came out very pretty, I have to say. I did not spend a lot of time coloring on this card because my emphasis was more on the fireworks. But I think she came out cute nevertheless. <laughs> so when I color my images, I have two sons and a daughter. And I always color things to look like my kids. I, I don't know why, that's just what I do. Sometimes I will vary the girl's hair, but generally that's who I'm thinking of when I color an image. Um, I have not had too much practice coloring different skin types. Um, 
like I said, it's just because I typically think of them when I color. Um, but I would like to start learning how to do some other skin types. Um, I was thinking about looking up, you know, colors people use and kind of playing around with that with my different mediums. Um, but, and I know Sandy Alnock does like a series um, on skin types and stuff like that. And she's really good. I really like to watch her for like colored pencils um, and watercolors. And if you have not... Um, check her out. She's, she's really, really good. She's the one who did the hex chart. Um, she has a hex chart for Copics, for colored pencils, um, which I have bought from her and um, I filled those charts in. So here I'm just going in and adding some um, shaded areas. So I'm going to let though that cardstock kind of shine through since that is why I stamped it on there. <laughs> so and I'm almost finishing up coloring her. I'm going to do um, her crown there. And then I will fussy cut her out. And I didn't have a die for her. Um, she wasn't too bad, actually, to cut out. It's The crown was the hardest part. And since there was only one, you know, image in there, I would say you can probably do that. I, I need to buy a Brother Scan and Cut. And I just, uh, it's just so expensive <laughs> to spend that much money on one thing. But then I think of all the money I spend on dyes. <laughs> but so here I had cut out a stitch circle with my lawn fawn dyes. Um, again, the same paper I used to print her on. And I'm just going to use my peacock feathers because that matched pretty good. Um, and I just wanted some shades on there. And then I picked out my sentiment to make sure it fit, and I stamped it on there. Mine was Let Freedom Ring. Um, I love that sentiment, and I loved how it looks like real um, handwriting. So I'm going to go ahead and pop her up. And then I am going to shade below her because I feel like if you just leave an image and you don't put some shading or ground her, I don't know. It just looks like she's floating then. <laughs> so I used just a little gray and again, um, a colored pencil to match that cardstock and just gave her a little shading there. Um, so I hope you liked my card. Let me know how you think the fireworks came out. Um, if you're going to try it one day, if you have already done it, I think it came out fairly cute. I, like I said, I'm not an artist, but they didn't come out bad. I really like the card. It is so sparkly. So join me again and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.